They are members of Otuodu Society of Onichado Nidu. Onicha is a cosmopolitan town in Anambra State. Otuodu Society is as old as the town. They started initially as an individual thing but it later metamorphosed into a societal affair. An individual thing, like those women merchants of old who were trading along the banks of the Niger, a sign of influence was that you own this, and you own that, and you own that. Like in those days where our grandmothers would have their gold beads, you know, the raw gold. Again, showing that, you know, they did well in their businesses and they were able to acquire these things. Such women, it was a sign of affluence for them. Like I do well in my business, I have this to show for it. It continued like that until many people started owning these things and then some elders got together and said, why not? Why don't we form you know, an association of these people? You know, these women who have done well in their in business or in other enterprises, in you know, they've excelled and they've made their mark in the society. On nature is a commercial nerve center and so it attracts people of different ethnic groups and nationalities but this prestigious group is for a select few. You're either an on nature woman by marriage or by birth. That is the first and foremost thing. Then secondly, you must be a well respected member of the on nature society. If you're a, a trader or a businesswoman, you must have excelled. If you're an academic, because in Otuado you have lawyers, you have doctors, engineers, have all kind of women, usually for women who have distinguished themselves in the society and in their chosen profession. The white outfit is symbolic. White symbolizes purity. The coral base and other accessories signify affluence. The ivory bracelets and anklets, known as Odoaka Nodoko in local parlance do not come cheap. For somebody of my size to get the anklet and the bracelet now, you will be thinking about one point something million. They are made from elephant tusk. There are age restrictions in becoming a member. For full membership, you have to be 40 and above to be inducted as a member of Utuodo, Odoko and Odoaka. That's the anklet and the bracelet one. You can do just the hand. The hand is usually restricted for people who are between 35 years and 40. But there are also people who cannot afford you know, to go the whole hog because it's quite an expensive uh, venture. So you find that you know, those people now, they, they settle for the, the odd worker, the bracelet one, until they are well able financially to conclude the process, which enables them you know, to wear the ankle one. Admittance into the prestigious Otward Society is no piece of cake. There's a process. First and foremost, there has to be a declaration of intent. Declaration of intent means you have to write an application to the president. Tell us a little bit about yourself, if you're married, who you're married to, what you do for a living, who your mother and your father are. That is very important. That's how we get to know who is really qualified as an indigent or a non-indigent. That's a second letter. If you're a married woman, your husband has to write a letter indicating that he's aware of what you want to get yourself into. In most cases, he indicates that he will bear the financial burden of getting you initiated into Utuado. Then there are two other letters coming from well-respected old members of Utuado testifying in you to your character and person. Then there's a non-refundable deposit that you make with the hot drink and the cola nut, you know. These your letters are read at an Otuado outing. They're taken through three readings so that members will know. Then they can ask questions about your person and your eligibility. So for example, if you are somebody of a questionable character, by the time we have taken this reading through the first, second and third, certain information start emerging about you that we will take into consideration, that will now enable us to decide whether we can move on to the next stage or not. And you're provided with the requirements, then you start getting ready for the process. Just before you are inducted, you have to face the screening committee. That is the last stage. When you have been screened, 
and uh, you have been giving a clear bill for us to proceed with the ceremony. Then you are now allowed to take a date for the ceremony. Then we'll take it from there. Dr. Ann Nzebu has gone through the stages. She really desires to be a member of Utoado Onicha. I think now I've come of age to do it. I'm a real daughter of the soil, and that's the aspiration of every Onicha woman, to be part of the noble Otuado Society of Onicha. Today is an induction ceremony, which is called Ibuadu in local parlance. Her chaperons are old members. They are with her throughout the process of preparation for the main ceremony. They are there to advise her on her outfit, her conduct during the ceremonies, and then to help her some of the things that were presented to members on that day. Because we have our specifications. We are very, very finicky about things that are presented to us. Those women helping her throughout the process will help advise her on the quality of things to prepare. They help her prepare so that the ceremony will be hitch-free and uh, everything will be flawless. Induction into a total nature is a two-day event. The first day is for Ibuego ceremony. That's the day the would-be initiate makes her first contact with her two other members. That is the day she deposits most of the money. That is Ibuego that you know will be required for the process. It's on that day that uh, we'll have a little party, a kind of party. You find that you know sumptuous meals are served to us on that day. We come in mufti, like in a party mood, in a celebration mood. The atmosphere that day is a bit uh, more relaxed. It's also a day for presentation of our Odoko and Odoaka to two other members who will in turn attest that house are original. <laughs> They are happy because a new member is about to join them. The second day, which is the match and order, you're supposed to appear in white. Everything white. Even your hand fan will be white. Every single thing is white, as you have seen. That is a more serious event than the previous day's event, because that is the day the induction proper takes place. Ibailo is a preamble to the main induction ceremony. It happens early in the morning. Her husband, or whoever stands in as the head of the family, will be there to help her put on the, uh, the other one. Another. It's a symbolic thing. After that, she goes round the town amidst pomp and pageantry. She visits relatives who in turn give her gifts and pray for her. Happiness is in the air as it converge for the final ceremony.
They always pray at the start and close of every proceeding. Be thou glorified, O Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Dean Doc T presents Colonel and old members welcome her with money. This is symbolic. It's a show of affluence. Because you always hear us ask her, have you ever washed your hands with money before? And she says, no. What it means is that after today, you will become more affluent than you've ever been. Poverty will never know your abode again. That kind of thing, yes. It's just a very symbolic thing. In Ibo land, the leader is allowed to break colonnade in the midst of fellow women. She prays with the palm wine, which is a local drink. Being Dr. T takes an oath to adhere to the constitution of the society. In the constitution of the Otoado society of Onichado. There are do's and don'ts here. As an Otoado member, for example, you're not expected to fight in public, to talk anyhow. You are not expected to visit beer parlor. If you want to have a drink, you have it in your house in a prestigious manner. If you are in business, everybody sees a high level of transparency, accountability, you know, and integrity in what you're doing. A very respectable person, and you also respect people. You carry yourself with a lot of dignity. Cross misconduct, indiscipline of all sorts, any grievous offense, you know, bordering on um, misdemeanors, like in a function, you're disrespectful to the president, even to a fellow member, misappropriation of funds. If you take an action against Utuado and against a member, because it's in our bylaws, and these are information you were availed with before you became a member, if there's any such infraction, you might lose your membership. A daughter cannot become a member before her mother. She has to do her mother's own first before her own. The, the ceremony could be done on the same day, but her mother's initiation process would be done first before her own. There's no hard and fast rule about the last girl doing before the senior ones, but you will find that your conscience will not allow you to do it. In all good conscience, you will not do it. If you have that much money, at least you should do it with your eldest sister. After your own mom's phone has been done. During induction, you're allowed to choose a chieftaincy name. Dr. Anne Nzebu now bears Gosiso Chuku, which means the way it pleases God. Otuo the society is a third in the hierarchy of leadership in our nature. Ndi chie, ndi zenozo, and then comes Otuo That means that we play a supportive role to His Royal Majesty's role in the larger society. We're there as um, role models 
advisors, basically mothers, and as the highest society that any woman of our nature by birth or marriage can uh, join. These are people of very high standing in the society. And that also now means that they play a vital role in the general affairs of the town, in the areas of philanthropy. Like we have this, our scholarship scheme, give scholarship to deserving children, male and female, in tertiary institutions. Even in matters of discipline, we are said to play a role. In fact, general well-being of women in our nature kingdom. At present, there are more than 460 members all over the world. You are expected to be in your full regalia at occasions. If your outing will involve a lot of movement, you find that after a short time, it becomes awkward. Yes, it is very heavy, but ideally, at every outing, if you're an inducted Utuadu member that performed the Oduku and the Oduaka thing, you should appear in both the bracelet and the anklet. But you find that sometimes again, some people have some physical challenges, some health challenges. They can't wear heavy things on their ankles or on account of age, the very elderly even, cannot even wear the bracelet because they're quite heavy. So we find that as you get older, we are not very strict, you know, the rules. If you don't have a health challenge and you do not appear in the full regalia, you're likely to be fined. So you find that at those outings, a provost would have gone around quietly to collect some fine from those able-bodied ones who didn't come in the full attire. The gains of being a member of this prestigious group are many. Well, there's a yearly bonus. That one is for every member. Then there's also a little stipend that we collect at every outing based on uh, the number of people that have come to greet us or to thank us during a function. They are by their members in good and bad times. We we'll gather in white like we do on the induction day. We will file out in a very solemn and prestigious manner to where the person is lying in state. We stand around the person, we sing for the person. There's always a tribute written by all that is read at the place. Then when we finish, we file back to our seats. If it's a Christian burial, thereafter we we'll get ready and we escort the, the cops to the, the church. We participate in the church service and at the end of the service we're back again to where we are waiting until the body is interred. Then after the interment we now say our closing prayers and we go. Otoo the society is for women who have influence and affluence. The parent body is in our nature and the president resides here. There are branches with coordinators. Major events like induction take place here. Friends and well-wishers from far and near come to felicitate with their own. Other parts of Igbo land have adopted this system. You will find it in other cities in Igbo land. But you find that where it originated from was from Onisha. That is the truth. That is the basic truth. The average Onisha person is very conservative and um, they hold on to their old ways of doing things. And they insist that these things are handed down from generation to generation, undiluted. Whatever Utuado is today, the dressing and everything is how it has always been from time immemorial. In fact, in all aspects of our, of our cultural life in Onija, whatever transpired before my great-great-grandfather was born is what is holding sway till today. Many of these women have made their marks in different fields of endeavor. An Onitsha woman is a total woman. The typical Onitsha woman is a very proud woman. She believes in herself. She's never in doubt about what she wants for herself. The average Onitsha woman is very highly emancipated in her thoughts and in everything she does. You cannot cage the average Onitsha woman. She knows her rights and she fights for her rights. The average Onitsha woman is a stickler for excellence in all she does. Whether she does petty trading, whatever she does, you find that she does it well, does it by the rules. A typical Onitsha woman is not afraid to speak her mind anywhere. A typical Onitsha woman is a great cook. So you find that 
in marriage, they do so well in marriage because the way to a man's uh, heart is through his uh, family, they say. She is a very neat woman, carries herself with a lot of dignity. She always tries to be the first in everything she does, to excel in everything she does. That's a typical Onicha woman for you. And then she takes pride in her looks. Oh yes, she takes real pride. Because you often hear them say, decency is no pride. <laughs> yes. Elephant is called any in Igbo language. These women are giants and they flaunt their name. Enye, enye, no. enye, enye.